wonderful midweek service. Oh, thank Him for His grace and His love, His kindness towards us. Kola male na shina maro no kosele madea. Rakolo mo shika la manta la ba kola mande. Mora mo shika la mando lo mo sila malamande lebea. Sila malondo lo mo sila mande lebea. Sula mande lebe kabori ande lebea. Father, we thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love, your grace, your kindness towards us. Thank you for your word that's coming to us tonight. Thank you that you are building us even to understand and know you more and to walk in your ways. Thank you, Lord. We are grateful that you reveal your word to us to help us to be pleasing unto you, to live a life that's pleasing unto you. Lord, we thank you for the knowledge. Thank you for the wisdom, the guidance. Thank you, my Father. And even today, our hearts and minds are open to receive from you. In Jesus' mighty name, the people of God say, be amen. amen. Welcome someone to church tonight. Welcome two other people to church tonight. Say, I'm full of grace. Full of grace. Say, I'm blessed. I'm full of the word of God. I'm full of the spirit of God. Yes. Hallelujah. You may be seated. So, thank you, choir. You may be seated. I don't think this topic needs introduction. We're already there, right? And I'm sure you, you've been understanding everything I've been teaching. I mean, you understand to the, to the point that if I brought you here, you can continue the message, right? Or you can repeat it, right? It's very, very important that you understand the word of God. All right, let's go. Let's keep going. Um, Book of Luke, Chapter One, Verse Fourteen, a prophecy about John the Baptist. Angel says that John the Baptist is born. He tells the people that thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Then in verse 15, he says, For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Not necessarily great in the sight of men, not necessarily great in the sight of the other person. If you probably put John the Baptist on the scale, uh, of what greatness looks like, according to the mix of man, John the Baptist might not necessarily place, but he will place in the sight of God. And how, why shall he be great in the sight of the Lord? Because he shall neither drink neither men and women of God. For 
it shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Why is it going to be great in the sight of the Lord? Because he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. This, the, the word used there, that word used there, end. It's not supposed to be end. The actual Greek word there, because uh, in the Greek language, end, but, because, are actually the same word. So in translation, the only way you know which one to use, the use of context. But with the use of context, you know whether it's supposed to be end or but. According to biblical context, Biblical context, but will be more correct to use than end. Why? Because of Ephesians 5. Do not be drunk with wine when in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. But look at John the Baptist, he says, For it shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, but he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. I see, but he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. What's going to make John the Baptist great in the sight of the Lord is he is going to be controlled by the Holy Ghost. He's going to be controlled by the Holy Ghost. This is what gets God's attention, not what men call great. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. You see, being a, a child of God, the, the, the moment you become a Christian, you've been introduced to a new set of values. Why do we, why, why in, in the message, why am I? almost like equating um, God's sight with value, valuation. Because that is exactly what we do. Remember anthropomorphism. You know, one amazing thing about, about all of us, if you sit in a church like this, and it's time to give offering. There's an amount you will give. If you go to a smaller church, you probably will reduce the amount. And we go to another smaller church, you probably will reduce the amount again. You know why? Because that's what we do everywhere. If you go to a saloon, there are saloons you will enter. If I'm lying, say, Pastor, you are lying. <laughs> if you go to a certain saloon and they say, here to braid is 2,000 Ghana City for one. <laughs> <laughs> and they tell, they tell you, and you say, what? They say, what, what are you saying? Beyonce was here last week. Every one was $4,000. We've even reduced it for you. We tell him, I'm sorry, please. Just, and let's say you have the money, you say, oh, just do it for me. Because when you walk out of the place, you're going to say everywhere that. Do you know why I, I went to braid this hair? I braided it at Riri joints. Why? Because you, 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 you have valued Riri joints. In fact, there are some places, even if they say it, you will start paying immediately. Why? 
because you see the whole place the aesthetics the kind the way the workers are all the workers are braiding with maybe gloves or something you know before they start braiding they have to inject your head you know something <laughs> Well, I've never been there, so don't judge me. Don't judge me. <laughs> then to, 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 to lay your edges, they will now bring, they told you that there's something that they brought from Colombia. <laughs> you know, and they tell you, no, no. Yeah, they, they, they look at your hair, they take a bit of it out, put it in a lab, and say, okay, you have African Masigano hair. Hey. So this, is, this hair is too hard. For us to lay your edges so we need to treat the hair with um chemicals <laughs> i mean all the shenanigans going on there will convince you that you need to give them more money and you see the way the people working on your hair they are doing four people they are massaging your head first to see whether you are an ancient or you are <laughs> you see you will pay now you walk into <laughs> you walk you walk into uh, 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 El die Saloon. <laughs> you get that they say to braid your hair, this hair, this particular style will be eight hundred Ghana City. What? You just pay four thousand somewhere. Valuation. You look at the people, how the, the, the AC is leaking. <laughs> eh, the AC is leaking. There's fun. Four women gossiping at the back. Disturbing your mental health. You're thinking, I'm not going to pay this here. Valuation. So when we look at that word anthropomorphism, likewise, we relate what god sees with how it's valued in his eyes so you see that scripture there for he shall be great in the sight of the lord because some things are not great in the sight of the lord some things are big in the sight of god some things are not big in the sight of god and the funniest part is what the bible says in luke 16 verse 15 let's go there Jesus, um, maybe we start from verse 14. Jesus is training his disciples, training the children of Israel um, afresh. You see, he's training them afresh. Will I be able to use it now? I should give you five minutes. So Jesus is training them afresh on their, their, their ways with God. Now, the amazing thing about Jesus and the Israelites was this. At the time he came, he said he came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, the people had lost their ways with God. Now, why had they lost their ways with God? Because they had just come back from exile. So they have, they have been in Babylon. Now, there were, the, uh, you know, as you know, Israel... Was 12 tribes but after uh, Rehoboam they, they were divided into two nations there was Judah and there was Israel so there was a northern kingdom and there was a southern kingdom southern kingdom was Judah and Benjamin northern kingdom was the other ten tribes if you remember the story if you do, if you don't know the story it's just Solomon had a son called Rehoboam when Rehoboam became king um, according to the prophecy God gave Solomon because Solomon at the end of his life the many women that he, he married set his heart after other gods. So he started seven other gods. And God's punishment to him um, was enacted in the reign of Rehoboam. And that he would divide the kingdom from him. So during the time of Rehoboam, Rehoboam um, allowed uh, the young advisors to advise him wrongly. So the kingdom was now divided into two. So there was the Judah and Benjamin, and there was the other ten kingdoms. Now, the ten kingdoms went into exile by the Assyrians. Then, 
Judah and Benjamin also went into exile by the Babylonians. The ones that went into exile from the Assyrians never came back. But Judah and Benjamin came back. That's what you see in Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. So I don't know if you have ever heard this song, By the Rivers of Babylon. Yeah, that's it's a scripture. By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. Because they remembered where they had come from. So when they returned from Babylon, when they returned, by the time Judah and Benjamin returned, that's what, that's what gave them the name Jews. Because they are from Judah. Those, those from Judah are called Jews. You see, the other ten kingdoms never came back. But you see, they are heathenistic propensities. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> All right, sure. They are, you know, they, uh, let me just put it. They, they just love other gods. <laughs> All right, because they loved other gods, the worship of other gods continued with them, and some of them ended up in other countries worshiping other gods. But you see the similarity in their worship of other gods with how the priesthood was in Israel. So some of them, some of the ten tribes ended up in Africa. So there are Jews in Africa. There are Israelites in Africa. But through a very long lineage. Yeah. But anyway, that's not why I'm here. But Judah and Benjamin came back. It was in their coming back. At the time they came back, it was around the time that uh, Jesus was born. When Judah and Benjamin came back, Jesus Christ said he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, at this time, the people have lost their way totally because they have been raised in a foreign country. So they don't know anything about God. So it was during that time that sects like Pharisees came out. Sadducees came out. Those sects are not from God. God never instituted synagogues. But you see, because of where they were coming from, in their bid to try to like restore God, they couldn't have just the system of temples. They set up synagogues for teaching. So the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes came out of that system. But they were actually wrong systems because they caused more harm. So they've lost their way. The children of Israel have lost their way. They don't even understand what is valuable to God, what's not valuable to God. So Jesus is teaching them and Jesus has to like almost teach them afresh. So you see in verse 14 here, and the Pharisees, look to the 16 verse 14, and the Pharisees also who were covetous had all these things and they derided him. What did they hear and they derided him? Let's start from verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in your righteous mammon, who will commit to you to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So why did it? <laughs> because Jesus was almost rubbishing money. He was talking about they being faithful in the unrighteous mammon. Then Jesus Christ texts them about they should rather love God than money. 
but in verse 14 it says but the pharisees who were covetous they loved money so you can understand why they would say that if anyone swears by the temple he is a debtor no if anyone said the temple it is nothing but if anyone swears by the gold in the temple he's a debtor because these guys are money mongers have you ever met a pastor who loves money I've seen those things before. I mean, a pastor told me, I, I think this was somewhere 2020 or 2021, uh, uh, one young man came to church and I've known him in the past. He came, I, I remember he was sitting on the second row. Uh, when he closed, there was like, he came to me and said, pastor all these people because the whole place was full i said all these plenty people you do not do fundraising <laughs> he was shocked it, it was foreign to me it was foreign to me that somebody is thinking like this it was foreign to me because in my upbringing as a christian not even as a pastor. In my upbringing as a Christian, I've never seen people as a means to make money. I've always been about the gospel. We'll talk about something today. All right, let's go. And the Pharisees also who were covetous, heard all these things. Now, you have to understand something about the Pharisees. The reason why they were defending their... The, come on, let's think about this. Did you ever hear the story of how when Jesus resurrected from the dead, the Pharisees gave the soldiers money? Come on. Did you ever hear about that? They gave the soldiers money to go back and, and say that the disciples stole the body. Uh, that thing baffled my mind so much. You know why? Because that means they didn't care whether he really resurrected or not. They didn't care. Why? Because being a Pharisee was a political position. They were, they, they were, uh, they were threatened by Jesus. Jesus had the crowds. Jesus had the true messages. Another one, Jesus had miracles. They couldn't cast out a devil to save their own life. They were threatened by Jesus. So, even if the man came out of the grave, I told someone, I said, miracles don't change people. I mean, the, the soldiers told them, at least if anyone know the, knew the truth, they knew the truth. Because the soldiers told them, listen, we, we are telling you for a fact, this man is already dead and left. He said, okay, keep quiet. So they don't care if he really resurrected. They, were never, they never loved the Lord. Oh, no wonder Jesus Christ called them, you vipers. They were vipers. They were not of God. They were vipers. They were scorpions. One time, Jesus Christ healed a man on the Sabbath day. That the man is healed is none of their business. That he's doing it on a Sabbath day. I don't, know, I don't know if you get the point. That, no, you should, it should make you ask yourself questions that God instituted the Sabbath, but this thing could, couldn't have also happened if it was not God. So maybe something has changed. I don't know if, if you get the point. But no, 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 no. Why are you healing on a Sabbath? Jesus Christ asked me a question. He said, some of you, you have cattle. You lose them on the Sabbath day to go and drink water. This guy is sick. He's is, it, is the Sabbath made for man or man was made for the Sabbath? God made a man to rest on the Sabbath. So, if the man was bound all his life, oh, if he was bound all his life, isn't the day he was healed a day to rest? But no, they have to protect their political position. Why? Because if Jesus Christ makes light of the Sabbath, they don't know what next he will make light of.
Some people cannot accept anything new. Why? Because to accept something new threatens their current position. Then Jesus taught them something in verse 15. Verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they, oh, who justify yourselves before men. Why? Because if they have money, everybody will say, Ah, the Pharisees are coming. Oh, the Pharisees are coming. Oh, the Pharisees are coming. You either you justify yourself before men. The reason why you, 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 you want to feel powerful because of money. Now, Jesus Christ is rubbish and money. You are there who justify yourself before men. He said, But God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Book of John. John chapter 5, verse 43. Jesus is still fighting with these Pharisees. He had a tough time with them. I am come in my Father's name, and he received me not. If another shall come in his own name, him he shall receive. Then he asked him a question in verse 44. How can you believe? Which receive honor one from another? I. I. Look at you. Look at you. Somebody told you, a friend told you. Everything on your body is not up to 200 Ghana <laughs> CD. Let me say this. I find it sad and pathetic that you are there doing your business and you think you have made it when some award scheme done by one person who had a dream <laughs> came to award you. I'll give you an example. Maybe you sell Sobolo. You are making your money from your Sobolo. You know what you are doing with your Sobolo. Now, all the sales that you are making does not mean anything to you until one guy stood up one day and said, I, I want to start Sobolo Awards. Sobolo, Sobolo Awards. He calls his friend, let's start Sobolo Awards. Then he calls Sobolo Awards. Then that day he called, number one Sobolo seller, maker. <laughs> Elvis Jantua. <laughs> there you go. I, I never knew I'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> I never spared it. <laughs> I never spared it. <laughs> I never knew it. Then you gain joy from this. I. What about what about the God who gave you the sales? How can you believe? Say you cannot have faith because you receive honor one from another. Don't let compliment kill you. That's why I'm a very big advocate of parents raising their children with a sense of value so that they don't seek validation from outside. For example, if you're a parent and you, you, your child is growing up and the child is five years and the child is in the bathroom and you are coming and say, no, 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 no. Don't say everything we have seen before. You are destroying the person's ability to have boundaries. I'm telling you the truth. Later on, if the, that person is in, a, is in a bathroom and another boy enters inside, it's like the world, that's what they do. But you, the parent, help the child. That five years old, no, 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 oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. From that day, the child knows that I can say no. And people should listen to me. Don't say, don't rubbish and say, oh, we've been baffing you. No, it's not the same. It has grown. 
Now you see, the same way, let, let God's word matter to you. If God says what you are doing is great, is great. Don't listen to what anybody has to say. God says you are fine. Don't say your nose is, no, don't say that. How can you believe? Which receive honor one from another and seek not the honor that coming from God only. There's an honor that comes from God only. You see? Yeah. In fact, let me say this. That scripture, it shall be the head and not the tail. And that's why last on Sunday I started teaching you concerning understanding what true victory means. You shall be the head and not the tail. Does not mean you will necessarily be the king. I want us to get it. Now, I'm not in any way trying to uh, inspire you to be mediocre. I'm just trying to give you perspective on life. For example, if you go to Egypt now, if you tell them to give you the list of their pharaohs, Joseph's name will never come in. Because he was not pharaoh, he was prime minister. Even though he handled most of the things, the only reason why we know that is because of the Bible. Esther was never the king. She was the queen. Daniel was never king, but he was working in the cabinet. You see, to be the head doesn't necessarily mean you have to be the king. But then God will put you in a position where you can influence things. And bring the will of God to pass. I, w- I said when I was teaching during I am, I said the history books of men never favor God's generals. The only reason why we know God's generals is because God gave us an, his account of the actual stories. If we go and look at the history books, it does not favor God's generals. Because you will never favor Daniel. His name will just appear like one line. We we'll talk about King Nabonidus, we'll talk about Belshazzar, you we'll talk about uh, Nebuchadnezzar and how big the big things they did. Oh, and he had a certain guy called Daniel. That's it would just pass through. Look at Esther, the story of Esther. Just one significant thing. Just pass through somewhere. Never forget God's generals. So don't make it look as though, you know, sometimes people say, you know. The children of God must be the president. Yes and no. Yes, because if that's what God wants to do, great. But they don't have to necessarily be the president. They can fulfill God's will. Because sometimes these things, these, these, those kind of messages, is people's ego that has been put into preaching. That's not God. Can we go to another level now? So I'm going to the third point actually. Because the first point was faith. Great in in the sight of God. The second one is the Holy Spirit. If something is going to be um, great in the sight of God or of a great prize in the sight of God, it's going to be the Holy Spirit. It will have to have the element of the Holy Spirit. But let me add one more scripture to that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. He said, Of how much sorrow punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and holy, and holy thing and had done despite unto the spirit of grace let me read something to you in after i spoke about um israel being an holy nation to god 
after I spoke about that, uh, I wanted to let you know where we also became holy, all right, unto God. So go to Romans chapter 11. Well, I'm still trying to get into the third one. Let me leave this for Sunday. There were three covenants. There were three covenants. I'll leave this for Sunday, but I want to come to something. There were three covenants. There's what you call the everlasting covenant. All right. That's what you call the everlasting covenant. The everlasting covenant is the covenant God made with Abraham. Now, out of the everlasting covenant came the old covenant. And out of the everlasting covenant came the new covenant. So I'll give you an example. If you have ever seen the... Uh, debates about tithe. Some say, we don't pay tithe. We don't supposed to pay tithe. Some say, we are supposed to pay tithe. And all that. Um, Vikani, I think it was you that sent me something by your member. Who, who showed you... Uh, a scripture that says that we are supposed to eat the tithe. Yeah, that scripture is there. You see, you are saying, hey, that scripture is there. In fact, let's look at it so that we all see. Maybe Pastor Enoch has been taking our money. And maybe we're supposed to actually eat the tithe. Go to Deuteronomy. Now, I have to show you this so that if you, because if you go one day and you are talking somewhere and they bring tithe now and they show you that scripture, you'll be sitting there like, <laughs> You'll be doubting your Christianity. So let's see. Are you here or you've gone home? Yes, I Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all. Now, first of all, I want to say this. The word tithe is not so much of a biblical word. All right? It's English for one tenth or a tenth. So, um, it's, it's like, it's, I'm, I'm trying to say that tithe is not like some heavenly word like God said tithe. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. There's no nothing like that. It's tithe is, is like saying a, a quarter. You see, that's English. Someone will say one fourth. Someone will say a quarter. Half. Tithe. That's it. English language. Okay. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed and the field that the field bringeth forth year by year. Next verse. And thou shalt hey, eat before the Lord, thy God. So because of this, there was a certain pastor in Somania. <laughs> when all his members give tithe, they all pound for food. <laughs> 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 and eat. Think about it. <laughs> he's, to him, he said he's doing the scriptures. That's all this process they are taking people's money and, and thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. In the place where he shall choose to place his name there. I mean, we all bring our tithes, then we look for <laughs> outside here, like imagine what will happen. If we, we all brought our tithe like this, and uh, uh, those who brought one CD, those who brought 50 CD, <laughs> we all sit outside here. And eat. <laughs> uh, sorry, man. <babe. laughs> Which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn and thy wine and thine oil and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. So now, how are we supposed to pay tithe? Now, look at all of us here now. Are we doing the right thing? 
if you are trying to look at the scripture to see if there's any a caveat, I will, I will, was like, eat before the Lord. You, you didn't say eat it. Let me tell you the problem with uh, a lot of Christians and understanding of scripture. This is the problem. When they start reading the Bible, they are already, it's like, for example, most of you tight. Right? So if someone ever quoted this to you, you are not thinking of the scripture. You are thinking of how to justify what you do because you don't want to feel stupid. But if you want to really get it right with God, read it as it is. Because what has made people come up with different doctrines is this. There's a very thin line between doctrine and personal preference. And sometimes... We double into personal preference while we are talking about doctrine. For example, there was a, a very reputable pastor who said he doesn't think that tongues is monosyllable. And that he doesn't think people were praying and doing hey, 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 hey. He doesn't think people were praying doing that. Well, who has the video of the apostles? No one has the video or the audio of the apostles, so leave it alone. What? Because at that point, we have, we have moved from doctrine. We have now entered personal preference. So, what people do is that while they are following the doctrine, following the doctrine, anywhere there's a gap. Because the, the, what I know is that I th- if I read the scripture and I have not studied it, what I'll be looking for, I'll be looking for loophole now. I'll be looking for loophole. Mm, he didn't say, mm, like someone asked me a question about Samuel. Did, did, um, when Saul went to the witch of Endor, was it a demon that came out or to a Samuel that came out? Now, the question will be, the question will be, was it a, a Samuel or, a, uh, or, or it was a demon that came out? Because they are thinking, eh, Samuel is in heaven. No, no, my one question is, who said he's in heaven? No one is, who said he's in heaven? So then how do you get the doctrine correctly? How do you get it correct? Just keep to the scripture. Allow the scripture to interpret itself. And scripture is very simple. Don't be looking for what's not there. It was somewhere why because the bible says that when the witch of endor did the necromancy samuel came out the bible didn't say it was a devil it was someone that came out don't say familiar spirit it was samuel because the bible says it was samuel so in this scripture and thou shalt eat before the lord whether eat it or eat them it is it you see we don't want to feel stupid so we are going to look for a way around this thing. So you know, we are wondering now, so then why doesn't that pastor Enoch now let us eat our tight outside here? That is where studying will now come in. There were four tights. In the law, there were four tights they were paying. Let's look at them one by one. But that means I might not be able to go to my third point. But I've already started it. I have to continue. Number one. There's what you call the Levitical tithe. You want to see... The Levitical tithe goes to Numbers 18. Let's read Numbers 18, verse 26. It's what you call Levitical tithe. That speak unto the Levites. Now, who are the Levites? The Levites was God's land, in, in a sense. Um, Twelve tribes of Israel. Remember the principle I gave you on Sunday? The whole world. You remember the, the, the boys I used as an example? 
the whole world, I took one out. That one, if he's made holy, the rest are also holy. Same principle. Jacob has 12 children. God takes one out. Because God told them in Exodus that I will make you a kingdom of priests. But the rest are not priests. But he takes Levites to make them priests. If the first foot is holy, the lamp also is holy. That speaks unto the Levites. So the Levites are the priests. The priesthood is with the Levites. And say unto them, when ye take of the children of Israel, the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance. There's the Levitical tithe. This tithe is going to the Levites because they did not have inheritance. God gave Dan inheritance, God inheritance, uh, Ephraim, Manasseh, gave them lands. Levites did not have land. So when all these people, the inheritance they have, whatever they gain from it, they take one tenth to go and give to the Levites. That was the Levitical tithe. Then ye shall offer up and heap offering, offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. So, first of all, you see two tithes here. There is the Levitical tithe. That's the tithe that is going to the Levites. But the Levites also have to pay a tithe of that tithe. So, there is the Levitical tithe and there is the Levite's tithe. Two tithes you are seeing there. There's what you also have called the festive tithe, and that was Deuteronomy's tithe. The festive tithe. That's when they go for their festivals. And God says, in this festival, how you will feed, feed yourself in this festival is that everybody should bring a tithe. It was on the, the day of that festival. So it, it was a periodic tithe. There's not a tithe they paid like monthly or any time they had or by the seasons it was by that particular so I, I, I've already showed you that scripture over there there was also another kind of tithe called which will be the fourth tithe that's the tithe to the poor and to the strangers I want us to look at Deuteronomy 14, verse 27. With all these things I've mentioned, you see some things there. And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. That's the Levitical tithe. Why? Because he does not have an inheritance. He says, And the Levite that is within thy gate, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance. Keep going. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year, and shall lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow which are within thy gates, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thy hand which thou doest. So you see the Levitical tithe, you see the Levite's tithe, you see the the festive tithe and then you see what the, the tithe to the poor and to the strangers and to the widow and to the fatherless those are four tithes so among these four tithes which one do we pay can you give me an answer among these four tithes which one do we pay levitical which one do we pay levitical which one do we pay levitical which one do we pay we pay none We pay none of those this, this four tithes. Why? We are not in the law. Which one do we pay? From today when we pay that you understand it. Which one do we pay? We pay the tithe that was revealed by Abraham because he was not in the law. 
and the everlasting covenant that gave birth to the old and the new testament then you see the everlasting covenant which is the everlasting testament that one is everlasting that's the testament that moses brought the old testament out of because god said to abraham he said i will bless your seed there was the sand seed and there was the star seed the sand seed is the seed that came earthly seed and there's the star seed his divine seed which is christ so the new testament also has its roots from the everlasting covenant so everything god promised abraham does not pass because of christ rather it gave birth to christ because to abraham and his seed was the promise made and the seed over there is christ so the practices of abraham which were also corroborated by some of his sons for example jacob jacob got into a serious uh, predicament and he said he vowed to god that if god brings him to the, the place he will give a tent so you see this thing was not a law given to them they had a revelation of it just like abel had a revelation of the first links and the first fruits because it's by revelation we follow abraham's faith so when we give a tithe of everything god has increased us with we are not doing it according to the law because we cannot do any of those tithes we do it because it is by revelation and also we when we study the patterns of god you always see that when god gives you something he always demands one out of it because of the principle i showed you on sunday God made the world in seven days. He took one day out. Anytime something will happen, you see God will take something out. Why? Not because he can't do without it. But that is his administrative justice. How that thing connects the whole lamp to him. When he takes it out, the whole thing... It connects the whole thing to him. What was the question? Okay. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. Um, sir, please, um, I wanted to ask uh, with the principle of God. Be before before you, 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 you go there, go to Matthew 23, verse 23. The TLB. He said, Yea, woe unto you, Pharisees, and you other religious leaders, hypocrites, for you tight down to the last mint leaf in your garden. But ignore the important things, justice and mercy and faith. Yes, you should tithe. This is Jesus speaking. But you shouldn't leave the more important things undone. In other words, Jesus, you know, like, like today you find the hyper hyper grace preachers i use hyper because grace is not a bad thing but hyper grace preachers like they just want to tear down all the foundations of of, of christ or, or of the gospel they want to tear down everything that oh we're not supposed to give time because we're innocent like, jesus christ never did that when jesus christ was speaking he never said eh, because i'm 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 here everybody should stop paying time no he says there are other things you are leaving undone like for example people who say i will not tithe i would rather give to the poor you are insincere because Jesus Christ says there are other things that have to do with justice, mercy, giving to the poor, all, all that is within that. He said those ones are good, but yes, you should still tithe. Yes, you should tithe, but don't leave the others to undone. So there are some on the extreme tangent of, yeah, uh, let's not tithe so that we can we'd rather give to the poor. No, you are insincere. There are some to say, yes, we will tithe, and they also leave the poor. They are also not doing the proper thing. So what? Tithe, give to the poor. You can ask a question now. So please, if you answer the question. I've answered the question. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> hey, God. Hey, God. 
Another question. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. I just, I just uh, demonstrated to you what it means, uh, what prophetic teaching means. <laughs> All right. Thank you, thank you, sir. So, sir, there is a passage in Scripture which I was intrigued with uh, related to the Levite. It's uh, Acts 4, verse 37, where um, there is a Levite which is known as having a land which he has sold. I was wondering if Levites are not authorized to own things, where did he got his land? Okay, now remember that I said they went into exile and came back. Everything was this scattered. Nothing was going according to the 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 way it's supposed to go. Okay, now there's what you call the Old Testament period. What we know is Old Testament period, and we know New Testament period. But there's a part that was called intertestament period. That was 400 years of God not speaking. 400 years it was within that years that there, there was the rise of the maccabees if you have ever heard of the maccabees that was the time the, the reason why we don't add the book of maccabees to the bible is because we don't consider that as prophetic history why because there was no prophet at that time so it is a historical account good book but it cannot enter the bible every book in the bible at that time there was a prophet so we consider that god was still speaking at that time so it is prophetic history this is just a historical account so within those 400 years most of the things that's what jesus christ like for example jesus christ came to talk about divorce and he taught down what moses said he said moses said but i say within that space of time many things have gone wrong that's why jesus is like reteaching the people everything again I, I get the point. So at this time, whoever was a Levite, they didn't even have the land because the Romans are even the, the Romans are already encroaching their land. So the original divisions of the land are not even there. Are you seeing? So things. So Jesus Christ said, "I came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They were out of the way of God. Everything was wrong. So for a Levite to have a land at that time, there's nothing wrong with it because things have already changed. <laughs> things have already changed." We don't know whether it was his grandfather that gave it to him. We don't know who gave it to him, whether his girlfriend that gave it to him. We don't know. But yeah, he was, he was a Levite and he had a land. Because the actual order had been disrupted because they had gone to exile and they were back. And they were still under Roman tributary. So nothing really belongs to them anyway. Are you getting it? Thank you, Pastor, yeah. for the opportunity. Yeah. Please, I wanted to clarify. So, with the Levitical tithe, the people bought their tithe to, to the, the Levites. Levites. Yeah. So, and the Levites also gave a tenth of that to God. Yeah. So the people didn't have a tithe that they gave directly to God. No, they always give the tithe to the Levites. Levites. Okay. Yes. It's like a, it's like a, your light bill. When you go to the ECG office. You don't put it inside the current, do you? How many of you your light bulb you put it inside the current? That this is where I got my light from. The ECG has put somebody in the shop to collect the light bill. I see. You don't say you will chop it. If he chops it between him and what? ECG. You get it? Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. So, at the end of the day, it's about our trust that the system God has set works. It's our trust that if somebody were to be, in quotes, mismanaging God's funds, it's between him and God. Like, for example, I always say that I don't take a salary as a pastor. But there's no way any of you can verify it. You just have to trust that what I'm saying is correct. <laughs> it's true. None of, you, I, 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 none of you can verify it. But I don't. 
but you have to believe what I said. And you have to also trust that if God is keeping me still as the pastor of the church, because God knows, how, God knows how to remove me if he doesn't like me. You understand? You have to trust that God runs the church. And I'm accountable to him. Yeah. And he rewards me for my faithfulness. Not for how, my, how I made you smile. Yeah. Thank you. Now, understand that if, if I take a salary as a pastor, I'm not wrong. You have to understand that. You don't know that. Let me show you. First Corinthians 9. I'll read 13 and 14. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Next one. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. I can decide to take a salary and I'm, go, I'm not wrong. But what Paul said, that's the mantra I go by. He said that he has all these privileges in the gospel, but he does not ab or use his power in the gospel. So I live my life in the hand of God because I refuse to take a salary. Right from the moment I started pastoring this church. You understand? Yeah, it's my, it's my own decision. If I say I'm taking salary now, nobody can do me anything. Do you understand? Yeah. But I, I know I know bigger I know bigger than that. That's why I don't go that direction. You get it? Some other pastor that decides that he's going to take a salary is nothing there's nothing wrong with him because pastoral work is actually work. It's actually work. People think it's not work. Because they think of work as it's supposed to start at a certain time and end at a certain time. But you don't ask the pilot why he's, he's flying at night. You know, as the pilot, why he's flying at night? You get it? Yeah. So, whew. okay, maybe on Sunday I'll get to my third point. I, I thought I would be able to do that here. Or maybe I can introduce you today. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. Uh, Pastor, please, I wanted to ask uh, you made mention of Titan, as Jesus mentioned, and in the Old Testament. And sometimes the hyper grace preachers sometimes talk about the apostles not really dwelling on it. So I wanted to ask about that. Okay. Now, let, uh, very good question. Let me tell you this. The apostles did not dwell on the tithe. You know why? Because <laughs> theirs was even, I don't want to use the word worse. Because them, they don't, you don't pay tithe. You give everything. You bring everything. <laughs> Acts chapter 4. <laughs> Let me tell you, the people's finances were micromanaged. Barnabas brought his land. He said, what do you want to do with it? And Ananias and Sapphira went to bring a, a part of, they went to sell the land and brought a part. They died. Peter's land, though. The land was not for Peter. Peter. The land was not for Peter. He killed him. I like that question because it will help me land properly with the, with the, with the subject of tithe. Acts chapter 4, verse 30. By stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy. Okay, verse 33. Maybe I'll start from 33. Better. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord, and great grace was upon them all. Verse 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Why? 
For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. They were bringing 100%, it's not 10%. Why? The one that did not have, and the one that were having, everybody brought their own. So now they shared everybody. So everybody was eating food. Free. So you see in Acts chapter 6, what happened? Verse 1. Remember that in Acts chapter 3, Peter said, Silver and good have I none. Acts chapter 6, in those days when the number of disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Christians against the people because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Now at this time, the widows are complaining that they are not being fed. Where did Peter and John get the money to go and feed these people? We all know that Jesus Christ did not give them any money. Because everybody was bringing everything and they were sharing it. But let me say this. So somebody will say, eh, why doesn't the church do that? We should all bring that things. Like, what, what they don't know is that later, Paul, because of church, because at this time, understand that the church system is just starting. Later, Paul now started addressing some of these things administratively. Why? Because people stopped working. Now, now at this time, all the widows are eating. But later on, Paul now started talking to some of the widows that if you are a certain age, we cannot feed you. Your family should take care of you. Let's look at it. First Timothy. Okay, wh okay, why do you think, why do you think, I want to ask you a question, why do you think Paul said that the one who does not work should not eat? Because this is how they were eating before. <laughs> they don't work, they don't do anything, and people will be just bringing their things and they are sharing it. But later, it, it was not sustainable. Okay. First Timothy chapter 5, I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 8. Let's go. Rebuke not an elder, but then treat him as a father and younger men as brethren. Keep going. The elder woman as mothers, the younger as sisters, 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 with all purity. Um, amen? amen? He said, honor widows that are widows indeed. What's the meaning of that? <laughs> Is that fake widow? <laughs> honor <laughs> I think Paul and savagery, man. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Now, at this time, he's talking to a pastor of a church. Now, when the thing started in, Jer in Jerusalem, it is, everybody's excited. They are bringing their land, their houses. Now, when the church started coming up, Corinth, Ephesus, Philippi, you cannot continue that. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Next verse. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home. Verse 4. I want to start reading this verse 4 from the Living Bible Translation, TLB. So you are thinking, show piety. Piety was really dance for him or what. But if they have children or grandchildren, these are the ones who should take the responsibility. For kindness should begin at home. Supporting needy parents. This is something that pleases God very much. Continue. The church should care for widows who are poor and alone in the world. If they are looking to God for his help and spending much time in prayer. <laughs> Continue. But not if they are spending their time running around. What do we want? Seeking only pleasure and thus ruining their souls. This should be your church rule so that the Christians will know and do what is right. There's eight. But anyone who won't care for his own relatives when they need help, especially those living in his own family, has no right to say he's a Christian. Such a person is worse than the heathen. As the church began to grow and mature, you began to see administration. 
they now started putting things in perspective. These people should not do it like this. When, when Jesus Christ left, he didn't give any rule concerning covering of head. I see. But later, as the people kept growing, some churches, if, like the Corinthian church, if you knew how the Corinthian church were, that was where the goddess Diane and all her things were, 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 were on. So, what you see today as feminism, that was, where, that was where it was. So, what was happening was that they had brought that into the church. It was in Corinth and in Ephesus. They had brought that into the church. So, when a woman prophesies in church like that, she's going to continue controlling the husband at home. Mama, 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 mama. Jesus Christ said that you people should be careful. You people should be careful. You people should be careful. And everybody believes that. The, the everybody said, ah, this woman prophesied today. So she got home now. The husband said that, ah, wifey, today, action. Say, mama, mama, mama. <laughs> Jesus Christ said, you should not touch me today. <laughs> So, so what was happening was that there was now usurping of authority. There was now usurping of authority. So Paul had to bring in certain measures. So he said, let all things be done in decency and in order. So there was orderliness as time went on. So let me tell you what now happened. Because in the New Testament, we are not under any law to give a 10, 10%. But rather, people were giving a hundred percent. Why? It shows us that everything we have in the new covenant already belongs to God. But because we are in a local assembly, we cannot say, my money belongs to God, but I'm eating it. I'm eating everything. Because we are in a local assembly, like you are in a church, a local assembly. You will take 1 Corinthians 16 from verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, I see, he's talking about, because Paul will go to all the churches. So you see, he spoke about church of Macedonia, he spoke about the other churches, they were gathering money. So concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches. So the churches had order. So at your church can say that everybody should give 20%. There was an, there's an order in the church that everybody should give to the person. Of course, nobody, nobody has put a knife on anybody's neck. But it's an order. If you believe that you are in that assembly and what they do is 20%, it, it, you are in that assembly, you are in that local assembly. So it says, now concern the Corinthians for the city, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Now, if you were in this Paul's time and you heard that Paul has given an order for a church to, to give, what would you think? We will put them on the internet. No, sometimes we behave like we will treat Paul lesser or Jesus lesser. We will really chastise them because some of their words were very harsh and very hard. Even so do ye, verse 2, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God had prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. So Paul said, I don't want to gather when I come. So as God has prospered you, you give. As God has prospered you, you give. So some will give 50%. Some will give 60%. Some will think, I want to give 80%. There are people who give, who, uh, uh, the, the Archbishop Benzin, before he, he passed on to glory, he was giving 90%. He wasn't giving 10%. He was giving 10, uh, 90%. So those who say, eh, we have, we have uh, come, we are, we are out of the time of uh, pain of tithe. It was in the Lord. So ask them a question, what do you give? They don't give anything. That's what Jesus Christ was talking about. He said, yes, you should tithe, but also don't neglect the poor. But these people, they use those scriptures as a means to what? Keep themselves from giving at all. But God looks on the heart. Have I answered your question? Thank you. When it comes to giving, enjoy giving, truly. Enjoy giving. It is uh, the, uh, this week. I, I, All the offerings, the seeds of Oikodomi, I went to give everything. I was so excited. Of course, I put my own in it. I went to give everything. 
I give everything because I want all your prayers to be answered. I want to give everything. I, I was so excited. When I was going, I was so excited. I was so excited. I was so excited. All the international offerings that were put in the Naira account, I gave everything the same day. I was so excited. I was so excited when I was giving it. And I even posted, I think on Snapchat, that there's so much joy in giving. There is joy in giving. If you have not experienced it, you don't know God. When you give, you realize giving is divine. You realize giving is divine, especially when it is free will giving. So, of course, don't allow anybody to put pressure on you to give, but be a giver. So that that you are not giving is not because there's something wrong with your heart. No. Bible says that every man according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. I'm a cheerful giver. I'll take one more question. Let me close. Oh Lord, my God, so great is your presence. Last question. Your power is displayed. There's one, other, someone at the back. Through only turn. You had a question. Near tears. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. Please, my question comes from Matthew chapter 8, verse 4. When Jesus had healed the leper and then asked him that he should go and then show himself to the prophets and then offer what Moses asked them to do. And then the uh, scripture reference was in Leviticus. But then when I read it, um, the the thing Jesus asked that the leper should do, the offering was some animals and then all those things. So I wanted to ask that, why is it that Jesus in his time, he asked that he should go and offer what Moses, Moses had commanded? Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, he asked them to offer what Moses has commanded because he has not yet died. If he has not died, it means the New Testament has not been instated. So then, even him, he went to the uh, synagogue as his custom was so he also lived in the law and obeyed the law while he was alive why because he was sent to Israel and Israel had laws the time of the laws and the statutes will pass after his death and resurrection and then people can get to God by faith but during his time that could not be possible so he has to obey the law that's why he said I am not come to abolish the law but i am come to fulfill it that means in fulfilling the law people don't understand that scripture people think jesus christ said i have not come to abolish the law i'm going to fulfill it that means um uh he's come to do the law no to fulfill the law it means you must meet all the requirements of the law that means if jesus was breaking the law he cannot fulfill it he must meet all the requirements of the law so jesus met all the requirements and he fulfilled every prophecy and every detail that was in the law when he was done he was blameless not only did he know no sin he did no sin peter said he knew no sin him who knew no sin uh, no sorry paul said he knew no sin peter said he did no sin John said there was no sin found in him. No sin at all. So then he could be the correct propitiation for our sins. But then at the time of Israel, he has to go and for, um, uh, walk through the law and obey the law. So he told them. Now, if he told the people, now ask yourself a question. Why did Jesus, when the woman with, uh, who was caught in adultery came to Jesus, why didn't Jesus outrightly say, You can't do anything to this woman. Leave her. Because the law of Moses states that the woman should be stoned if she's caught there. Jesus could not say that. Jesus was writing in the earth. Two reasons why he was writing in the earth. Many people have tried to think about it, to say... Uh, maybe the reason why he was writing in the earth was that, number one, 
he has to be silent why because first of all they've not brought the woman to the right court the woman was not supposed to be brought to him the woman was supposed to be taken to the elders at the gate so there's this is a clear trap because they're not supposed to bring it to him they're supposed to take the woman to the elders at the gate so they bring a clear trap to jesus if he says stoner your messiah is killing people if he says don't stone her it's against the law of moses so he began he begins to write in the earth he begins to write on the number one jesus is going to be guilty for that woman so according to divine justice what jesus does is he is going to die for her so he has the right to say that because he's still going to die for her number two he is writing in the earth because jesus was using a style of teaching in his days called remez remez means using hints so in the book of jeremiah when you read what he, what the uh, jeremiah actually says those who forsake me shall be written in the earth so as the hand that wrote the law to moses he writes the woman's name in the earth in his silence he asked a question if you have not seen before cast the first stone then all of them the first guy in front i know him akwesi papa He stole someone's lamb the night before. He dropped a stone. John Sunday was standing behind. Oh, not the John Sunday here. <laughs> John Sunday behind Akwesi Papa. He was running someone's wife the night, that night. He remembered his drop. So all of them started dropping, dropping. And one lady at the back, she has been kissing some, a certain boy when they all walked away Jesus Christ said neither do I condemn you but go and sin no more that was the reason thank you <laughs> be on your feet let's pray I will introduce Sunday then on Sunday we will Second Chronicles 16 verse 9 he says Verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. On Sunday, I'll talk to you about the heart. Anything you do, if it is not coming from the right heart, God did not see it. The thing could be good. Your heart. I like what somebody said. He said the heart must always undergo renovation. Because you see, God doesn't care. And I repeat it. He doesn't care how big your church is. He doesn't care how big what you are doing is. He doesn't care how much money you have. If your heart is not in the right place. Jesus said in Mark chapter 7. From verse 20. And he said. That which cometh out of the man. Defileth the man. He said for from within. Out of the, ma of the heart of men. Proceed evil. God is not just looking at the wrong thing you did. He's looking at your heart. 
the day you realize that the externals mean nothing to God, you always check, this thing I'm doing, what is the state of my heart about it? I just climbed the stage. What is the state of my heart? Do I want to show off? Do I? You will check the state of your heart. Why am I angry? So this thing that I'm angry about now, why am I angry? The state of your heart. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Jesus says, the problem has been your heart. Your heart. The Bible says that, and Amaziah did all that was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Yes, sir. God rejected everything he did because his heart was not perfect. For the eyes of the Lord. This is the meaning of that scripture. The eyes of the Lord. God is looking on earth. He said, run to and fro. The eyes, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. He said, he's looking for the one whose heart is perfect. When God's eyes run like this, he's looking for a heart. He's not, he's not looking for a powerful pastor. He's not looking for a powerful businessman. He's not looking for a rich guy. A, he's looking for a heart. God's eyes has a way of locating heart. Your heart. On Sunday, we'll go in detail. He said to Lucifer, he said, you were made beautiful. You were made beautiful. He said, you were made beautiful. All that beauty was not taken from you, he said. But until iniquity was found in thee. That means it doesn't matter what was outside on Lucifer. The carbuncle, the gold, the sapphire. All those things, they don't matter to God. With the day God saw iniquity in Satan, he said, I rejected you. So until, until iniquity was found in thee. God asked Peter asked Ananias why has Satan filled your heart why has Satan filled your heart Acts chapter 5 verse 3 why has Satan filled your heart some people have been rejected by God they don't know they've been rejected by God but Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart? You know, sometimes when we read this scripture, we read them. But the, the key is inside. It's, it's, it was because this thing was his Ananias' heart. Someone else might make the same mistake. He will go scot free because it was not in his heart. He said, Satan filled your heart to lie. See, Sometimes you must do heart checkup. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I a leader? Why am I a choir star? Because you can start off in the choir. You started committed, committed, committed. Later, it is what you can get from the choir. Some what you come to church. The person came to church inspired by the word of God. He didn't care if they gave him keyboard or not. He didn't care if they gave him bass or not. He wanted the word of God. His heart was clean. His heart was pure. But by the time he started playing keyboard and four ladies came to him, I love the way you play. I love the play. The next day, don't put him there. He's angry. Something has happened to his heart. Why had Satan filled your heart? If you're looking, he said, For God see it not as man see it, but God looked on the heart. Jesus Christ said it in Luke 16 15. You are there who justify your fellow men, but God see it your heart. The problem Jesus was seeing with the Pharisees is he's seeing their heart. One time Jesus said, The Bible says that when Jesus saw, he perceived their wickedness. Why do you give? Check your heart. Why do you give? Check your heart. Sometimes you have to go waiting on the Lord, praying and fasting. 
Usually when I go and do, when I wait on the Lord, the first day is God. If there's anything wrong in my heart, show me. He will start showing you. You will be surprised at yourself. You will surprise yourself that all the things you were doing, looking like you were, no, something was wrong inside. It was wrong inside. Until iniquity was found in thee. Let's pray. Pray. I want to talk to the Holy Spirit now. Pray, I want to pray the Holy Ghost. From within, oh Lord, my God, so great is your presence, the powers display. Jeremiah 17 verse 10 he said I the Lord I search the hearts I don't search your account I search the heart I don't care about you, how your voice sounds I search the heart I don't care about your prestige I search the heart I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. Search the heart. <laughs> you know, sometimes funny, they're funny how people say things like, you know, God is, is not looking at my dress, he's looking at my heart. Do you, do you know what's in your heart? The pride. The pride of thinking there's something good in your heart. You, you do know your heart. 
The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. If your heart can be deceiving, you think you're a good person. One time I was in an Uber, a certain Uber driver was telling me, he said, oh, his brothers have been going to church, but they are all, you know, not good people. But he, his heart is good. I said, look at that. I said, the, the audacity to think that your heart is good. Oh, have you seen your heart? If you go and pray one day, say, God, reveal my heart to me. What's in my heart? Why do I do that? If God starts opening your heart to you, you will, you will cry. You will see how wicked you are. You've just not met a situation that will make you very wicked. Until you meet a situation where somebody has, somebody has, excuse my, 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 my example, somebody has your nudes and you have the opportunity to kill him so that it doesn't come out. You will see that you can kill him. Do you understand my, my analogy? You've just not come to that point where you have a, a situation where you can be wicked. You think your heart is good. You're a wicked man. heart Lord help my heart help my heart have you prayed let's pray let's pray together father in the name of Jesus we are before you today Lord your children we want to get it right we want our heart to be clean towards you we want our heart to be right before you, O oh God. Help us. Help us to have a pure heart. You said in your word, it said, Blessed are they that are pure in heart. He said, For they shall see you. Lord, help us to have a heart that is not mixed with our personal ambitions and wrongful desires. Give us a good heart, Lord. A heart that lives and acknowledges you in everything Lord we pray even as a church that Lord we want to walk before you perfect in all things that Lord we will not be disapproved of you that we will be approved of you because of our hearts help us Lord help us Lord let our hearts be clean toward you Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Bring out your offering.